hold up. As bow hunters, we dream of getting a shot at a buck like this. Last year, I had that chance. Let's backtrack a few years, and I want to tell you a story of a buck we called Hook. The evolution of bow hunters has changed drastically since I first picked up a bow at around the age of 10 or 11. Today, chasing one specific buck, as opposed to just going deer hunting, has changed my outlook on the sport completely. The hunt on December 17th of 2017 started a three-year quest after a once-in-a-lifetime buck. After arrowing a five and a half year old buck that evening, I was thrilled by the result. But the other buck in the field was really still in the back of my mind. I spent the next several months curious and optimistic what hook would turn into the following year. So Hook finally surfaced on the farm in early September of 2018. We knew he was five and a half now and quickly became the top target for all of us. Uh, we got close tonight. I had him come out and the wind was just super swirly. The deer were acting kind of funny, but they finally calmed down and the bucks were all sparring and feeding in the plot. He came straight towards us, no issues at all, and the bucks changed their tune and started heading towards him and he did a loop around him just kind of pushed him off and never came our way so I know we'll be back in there he likes that spot and, and uh, spent a lot of time in that area so narrowing down a buck's core area can sometimes be a challenge but this was no problem with hook he was all over our cameras in one of our favorite areas called the donut leaving us very optimistic about getting him within bow range little did we know the cat and mouse game was just beginning. Oh, there he is. sees these other deer they ran off so are you gonna be able to get on him okay huh okay once he steps out in this gap see how far he is bap 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 I hit him low. 
only be just just hair. I don't even know. He came in. I rattled and he came in cruising. He saw some does to our left and went straight at him. I ranged him at 56 yards. And I purposely held a little bit low because he was, I had to stop, I had to like yell to stop him because he was just cruising hard. And I don't think he ducked much at all. After the back and forth, Mike finally got a shot at Hook, but he missed low and all he found was hair. I was concerned, so I decided to go back to that area the following day, hoping to see Hook and that the shot wasn't lethal. worst nightmare is wounding an animal. So seeing Hook alive the next day was a huge relief. As the season progressed, Mike ended up shooting an old buck that we had named Bovice. Therefore I had come to the conclusion I was going to commit the rest of my year chasing Hook, 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 Hook. As the offseason approached, we were left with little knowledge of Hook's whereabouts going into 2019. Although Hook had vanished from the farm, hopes were high for 2019. We had planted specific plots for him, hung specific stands for him, and we were hoping he would surface in the same area he was the previous year. This should be a pretty healthy food plot. These are really good soils. This is an area we call a donut, and it has been really good over the past few years. And one of our biggest target bucks is gonna be here this year. We know he made it through the year last year. And uh, so the anticipation is there. We're waiting for him to show up. Still can't get an idea of how big he is. Cause he's always sideways. So I hope we got some videos. Yeah. Hey. Hook finally surfaced in early September. We'd hoped he'd make a good jump in antler size, but he exceeded all expectations. Upon laying eyes on these trail camera photos, I was completely blown away with the non-typical rack he had grown and the amount of mass he had put on in one year of growing. This deer was a true specimen of a whitetail.
crazy hunt so far. The deer that we came in here to hunt came out and he popped out at like a hundred. And we're on Nebraska plot and on the other side, that road that leads that way away from us is all clover. He was feeding on clover, fed slowly away and then went up the hill into the deep timber that way. There's a cornfield on the other side of the timber that I'd imagine he's headed to. It's insane. It's the buck that we call Hook. First day I've actually hunted Missouri myself, so pretty exciting. Seeing Hook was incredible and surreal yet frustrating, knowing it was going to be so difficult to get him close. Our plan of attack was to bounce back and forth between the donut blind and a stand about 300 yards to the east across the valley that was set up for a west wind or a northwest wind. We were hoping as he traveled south to a cornfield, he would pass one of those stand sites within bow range. Yeah, he's across. There he goes. We just saw him. And this is like narrowed down to where he's bedding, but you just can't get any closer it seems like, so. There's just like no perfect way to hunt him right now. October 10th and trying to kill Hook. We don't seem to have any trouble seeing him. We're just having trouble getting close to him. But the only hope is for him to come into this plot. So far, he has not done that, but yeah, that's him. He's like five or 10 feet from the the ladder stand down there and he's going up the hill beating on acorns. I mean, it's obviously wrong for that stand so we couldn't hunt it anyways but no problem seeing him. It's just a matter of getting close enough which seems to be the problem. After more back and forth hunting hook in the donut I was beginning to get frustrated. We needed to change our strategy. Instead of hunting the donut again, I came up with the game plan to hunt the cornfield he was heading towards, hoping he would make it there before dark. Oh, dang it. 
hook and I just when I stopped him he looked right at me facing me and then I whiffed the shot shot low I might have nicked his leg back leg shot right between his legs he was like on a line he was sniffing where those does were at. And he was like, it was like a dog coming through here just with his nose to the ground. And when I tried to stop him, he turned and looked right at me and facing me. Gosh dang it, man. I'm freaking sick to my stomach. That was terrible. 20 yards. I lost it. Just literally lost my mind. Gosh dang. beating myself up about it pretty bad. I, I can't remember the last time that I've done something like that where I literally, I mean it's a chip shot, 20 yard shot, lost my mind. I lost it. Cause it's, I mean that's the biggest deer that I've ever shot at in my entire life. It all came down to that one moment and I just whiffed. The day after the shot, we spent the majority of it grid searching, hoping just to find something. About a half a mile from the shot, we found a few specks of blood and then nothing. So from there we were left with one choice, hope that he survived and that he would show up on camera again. And fortunately a few days later, he showed up in front of the very same tree stand that I shot him out of, and in daylight. After that we got a few more pictures of him, and then 12 days after the shot on November 9th, got one more picture of him before vanishing. I found Hook. I just found Hook. Oh my God. Sean's gonna freak. Oh my gosh. This is insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey boss. Oh man. This is a deer that we were hunting all year. Well, early season. We've been hunting him for a year and a half actually, or the past two seasons. And we knew he was probably dead because we can't quit getting pictures of him in the middle of November. And unfortunately, I missed the deer and nicked his back leg which wasn't fatal, he was still alive 10 days after it happened. Maybe he was 12, I can't remember, but after that, right before rifle season, he kind of disappeared and maybe he moved on over here because that was over a mile away. And uh, I don't know if he got shot or what, I haven't obviously investigated. Chandler was on this side of this hill because we're getting ready to do a prescribed burn and came across him and started yelling at me, saying that he found him. Wow, what a specimen, what a giant huge white tail and sucks it in this way. I don't I don't know what happened to him. <sighs> We're gonna get a carcass tag from the game warden and uh, sadly this is how it ends on a gigantic Missouri deer. This story ended about a mile from where my shot had taken place. 
Did he die from me? From infection? Or did he die from another hunter and wasn't recovered? I'll never really know the answer to that question. This story did not end up the way I'd hoped for. In fact, portions of it were a nightmare. But what can I take away from these experiences? I say growth and knowledge. The story of Hook isn't as much about me as it is really the animal. An animal that avoided the odds Mother Nature set against him for quite some time. An animal that came with many lessons for a hunter to learn. An animal that truly took your breath away.